Hello everyone, welcome to Summit Church. I'm so glad you've joined me today. I look forward to sharing the Word of God with you. I want to ask you a question to open this message. And the question is this, are you depressed? <laughs> are you depressed? You know, depression is something that all of us have to deal with from time to time. And what I want to deal with in this message is, is not just, you know, having a blue day or a down day from time to time. You know, all of us have those. Uh, it's like the carpenter sang, you know, the song years ago, Rainy Days and Mondays. You know, all of us on a rainy day or, you know, wake up on a Monday, first day of the work week. And, you know, I mean, all of us have those blue days, those down days. That's just part of being a human being, and, and that, that just is what it is. So I'm not addressing that today in this message, just the, you know, the occasional down day that all of us have. Um, but what, I'm, what, what I want to deal with in this message today is, is the, the kind of depression that is uh, uh, dehabilitating. It, 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 it affects your ability to, to function productively in life. And there are just a whole lot of people that suffer from depression to the point that it really affects the way they, they are able to live their lives. I know I have dealt with depression myself over the, uh, over the many years. And, and I tell you what, it, it's not a fun thing. And, and it's, it's very real. And, and I know that because I've experienced it at times over the years where it has really affected my ability to, 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 to function the way that I needed to function. And, and so many people deal with, with depression that it, it just seemed good to the Holy Spirit today that I deal with this, with this subject. Um, you know, after my uh, many, many years of being in the ministry of you know, many decades, uh, and, and observing many, many people, and even long before I, I was in the ministry, just watching people, and, and again, knowing this from my own life, that there are typically, typically three root causes for depression. Typically, three main causes for depression. Uh, so if you're out there suffering from depression, Again, not just a down day or a blue day, but it's, it's, it is a significant problem in your life. There's, there's typically one of three areas from which that depression is coming. Now, the first area would be circumstantial. Circumstantial. Uh, you know, for example, the death of a loved one, uh, the loss of one's health, or the loss of a job, or, you know, something like that, a circumstance uh, something that's happened in your life from which depression springs, okay? Uh, so one area would be uh, circumstantial where, where depression could, could uh, arise out of. The second area is spiritual, spiritual. And that, of course, uh, would have to do with an attack of the enemy, uh, you know, an, an oppressive, depressive spirit, uh, uh, you know, where the devil in some way a demonic power in some way is causing the depression. And then the, the, the third would be a chemical imbalance, a chemical imbalance. So three main areas from which depression would spring. And sometimes people can have a combination of these. It's not like, you know, depression's just coming from one of these three areas that I've mentioned, but, but there could be a, a combination thereof. But be that as it may, circumstantial, spiritual, or, or chemical, chemical imbalance. Now, chemical imbalances are, you know, in one's body, those are very, very real. And uh, now, now, I'm not a doctor, okay? I, I'm not a doctor. Used to be a math teacher, uh, now a minister of the gospel. Not a doctor. Uh, so I'm not going to say a whole lot about chemical imbalances because I'm not really qualified to, to speak on that other than, uh, you know, some things that I've observed over the years. Now, I, I will say this, if, if you're dealing with depression and it's not coming from a, a you know, a, or it's not happening to you because of a circumstance 
or it's not, you know, uh, an attack of the devil in that, you know, it's a demonic oppression or something like that. If it's not circumstantial, if it's not spiritual, very likely it could be, I'm not saying for sure that it is, but it could be a chemical imbalance. And, and I've watched people over the years, uh, you know, their, their chemicals in their body, in their brain, uh, in their brain get out of whack. And I tell you what, it can really, really cause havoc and problems with people. And, and one thing I also have observed is that when people have a chemical imbalance, and I've watched this being in the ministry all these years, and, and people are rebuking evil spirits and, and all of that. And there is a truth in that. We'll talk about that, you know, here in just a little bit. But what, I've watched people over the years, you know, they're rebuking the devil and, and this and that and the other. But, but all the time, when you get right down to it, and as they've been evaluated by medical doctors, you know, good qualified medical doctors, uh, you know, uh, you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, whatever. And, and they find that they, they, the person, you know, it wasn't a demonic spirit that was causing the problem, but they had a chemical imbalance. And when they were able to, when the doctor was able to get the, uh, the you know, through medicines and whatnot, was able to get that person's ke uh, chemicals balanced properly, then the person was just fine. The depression left and and they were just fine. So there is a, a great truth in, in chemical imbalances that can cause people to really be, be down and depressed to the point where they can't even really function in life. And, uh, uh, you know, and so if it's a chemical thing, uh, it, you know, let me say it this way. If, if it's not a circumstance that's causing depression or if it's not, uh, you know, demonic power, it, it, I tell you what, it very likely could be chemical and, and uh, you might need to seek medical help for it. Um, I think of my mom, uh, what a wonderful lady uh, she was. She's in heaven now. But I remember back when I was uh, a, a senior in high school, uh, she had a situation where she had to have uh, one of her uh, female organs removed. And, uh, and, and she, I tell you what, before that, I mean, she would just, I mean, she, she was just very productive and just upbeat and just, you know, that sort of thing. And I tell you what, after she had that surgery, uh, physically she was fine, but I tell you what, she went into a bout of depression. I mean, it, it really, it, it scared me. I, I'd never seen her like that. I mean, she went, I mean, she went to where she couldn't, I mean, she couldn't function. Uh, she loved to go out and cut grass. And I mean, she stopped all of that. Uh, she, you know, she loved to clean the house. She, she's always, you know, was a worker. She liked to get up in the morning and just do work. She, that's what she liked to do. And I mean, she'd get up in the morning and just sit at the, at the kitchen table and she'd, she'd be half crying most of the day, looking out the window, you know, just wondering what am I going to do, you know, the rest of today? What am I going to do tomorrow? This, that, and the other. And come to find out what it was, was uh, because of that female organ that had been removed, her hormones got all out of whack. And uh, uh, I, it was hormonal. And, and back there, you know, at that time, uh, you know, I, I don't know if the doctors recommended hormone therapy for her or not. I, I don't know. I, knowing my mom, it's unlikely she would have taken anything. And I do realize with hormonal drugs, there are side effects that it can cause other problems. I understand that. But the point I'm trying to make is at that time, you know, there was no circumstances causing her depression. And uh, there was, it wasn't anything demonic, you know, of oppressing her. It was that her hormones got out of whack. And I mean, this went on for, for you know, about a year and a half. It was just... It was just, it was, it was horrible. And I mean, she was talking about her, you know, she wanted her life to end and just all sorts of things. And, uh, but it was hormonal. It was a chemical thing within her body. But thank God in the process of time, she came out of that. I guess, I guess her body, again, I'm not a medical doctor, but I guess her body eventually adapted to, to the, the hormonal changes but, but she came out of it. But I tell you what, that was a, a chemical thing. And oh, what a terrible thing that was for her. And uh, it was just so, so sad to watch her go through that. 
But uh, and then and then I'm I'm thinking of another uh, uh, a friend of mine. He was telling me about uh, one of his grown children who just battled depression, just just battled it left and right. And uh, 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 it was a horrible thing that the, the child, it, well, I say child, it was a grown, you know, in, in the early 20s, but just couldn't function. It was horrible. And, you know, he, in fact, he was a minister and they had rebuked demonic power and all of that. And there was no circumstances in, the, in, the, in his child's life that, you know, that they could point to that was causing it. Long story short, they were able to get, uh, get he was able to get his child some good, medical help. And he said it took quite a long time, but they, they were able to get the correct uh, uh, medicine in, into his child. And uh, they got that chemical the, the, in the brain. Apparently there were chemicals out of whack. They were able to get the medicine balanced just right and get that person, uh, 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 you know, their, their chemicals proper, prop, proper in their body. And then uh, he, he told me that once they, they got that squared away, the chemicals were, were, were balanced or whatever, however you want to say it, said that his, his child was just, just fine. And so I, I bring up the chemical part of it simply because, you know, a lot of times, particularly out of cir the circles in which I have come ministerially, you know, whenever somebody is depressed, Right away, people want to start rebuking the devil, and, and there is demonic, uh, de, you know, demonic power can cause depression, as we'll see. But but a lot of a lot of times it's not demonic, and and if it's not circumstantial, it, it very well could be chemical. So I just I just thought that uh, that's worth mentioning. And if if you're out there and you've struggled with depression, you know, and, and there's no circumstance in your life that's causing it. And, you know, to the best of your knowledge, there's no demonic power causing it. You might want to seek some medical help. You know, I tell you what, uh, 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 I'm, I am all for good hospitals, good doctors and good medicines. I think we should turn to the Lord first and seek him and, and seek his power. But, you know, there's sometimes the Lord will direct you to a good doctor. Absolutely. The Apostle Paul, his traveling partner, Luke, he was a medical doctor. And I remember over in the in the uh, 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 book of Isaiah, I guess it was, where uh, uh, he had directed, the prophet Isaiah directed, you, uh, I guess it was Hezekiah to you, I think it was Hezekiah to, yeah, to use a, uh, uh, some sort of a, uh, uh, some sort of a medicine to, to uh, uh, heal his illness. So, uh, you know, we as 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 uh, uh, you know preachers of the gospel that have healing ministries, I've watched the power of God heal so many. Uh, just you know, through the laying on of hands and the, the transference of the anointing of God. But I've also there's been many times where I felt impressed of the Lord to have somebody you know just tell you need to go see the doctor and the doctor can help you. But be that as it may, I believe, like I heard one good minister say, he said between what God does and, and between what God does and the doctors do, I tell you what, there you know good things can happen. So you seek the Lord concerning your situation. But uh, I just felt impressed that you know to bring up the chemical issue because a lot of times people are, are depressed because of, of chem their chemical imbalance. Anyway. But now, let's look at this next uh, area from which depression can spring, and it's circumstances. Circumstances, uh, and th this is a big one, obviously. And this is very, uh, this one is very easy to to identify. Whereas the chemical imbalance is, is far more difficult a lot of times to identify as, as being the problem or the cause of depression. But circumstances, I think, is is very easy to uh, identify, it's very clear, you know, has, have you lost a loved one? Has a loved one died? Or have you lost your health? Or have you, you know, gotten a bad medical report? Or have you lost your job? Or, you know, something, something of that nature. It, very, very easy to identify. And, uh, you know, with, with uh, a bad circumstance, dealing with a bad circumstance that causes depression, you know, uh, I will say this, first of all, give you uh, some encouragement, circumstances can change. And that, that is really wonderful to know. Circumstances can change. And just because it looks real bleak right now, doesn't mean it's going to look and be real bleak 
next week this time, okay? And so, uh, you know, circumstances can change. However, sometimes they cannot. Sometimes they can't be changed. So the question would be what to do then if I'm suffering from depression from a circumstance that cannot be changed. You know, speaking of my mom a few moments ago, you know, uh, I, I remember another time which happened many, many, many years prior to that operation that she had back when I was seven years old. Now the situation with that operation, I was in high school, but I remember going back way back before that when I was seven years old, I remember uh, my dad had gone to Pennsylvania on a business trip and uh, long story short, the knock came on the door and my mom, my mom and grandma had just been out shopping for my dad's 53rd birthday because within a week he was going to turn 53. And I remember being with them and we were at South County Mall and they had been, we'd been through the mall and my mother had bought, my grandma had bought him some presents for his birthday. And we had come back home and we were, they were unpacking the presents and whatnot. And the knock came to the door and, uh, and the news came that my, my dad had, had unexpectedly passed away while he was on the business trip. And I tell you what, that'll, I still, I'll never forget that day as long as I live. And you talk about a circumstance that'll call, throw you into depression and cause depression, that'll do it. And I remember that day just like it was yesterday. It was a, a terrible day for our house. And I remember my, my mom, she changed that day. She's never, never quite fully the same after that as you can, can understand. But uh, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. And I know that uh, uh, after the, the funeral, you know, was, was over and all, in the weeks that ensued after that, I remember my mother and it's understandable, this was a circumstance that could not be changed. My dad had passed away, but she went through a terrible, terrible, terrible time of depression. And I went, went along with her. I was seven years old, so I didn't really fully understand all that was going on, uh, you know, because I was so young. But I remember watching my mom and... Uh, she, she, it was a, it was a very, very, very difficult time. See, a circumstance caused that, that, that depression. And she went into about a depression, as I said. And uh, one of the, one of the big things that caused it too, was it wasn't just missing a loved one. Uh, that's bad enough. But my mom, my dad was, I mean, her life was, was centered around him. And, and, you know, he, he gave her great reason for living and, and, things to do, you know, cooking for him and cleaning for him and, you know, being there to take care of his needs and whatnot. And I remember my mom cooking meals every day to get meals prepared for my dad when he'd come home, you know, in the evening. And I remember running out to meet him, you know, in the driveway every night when he came home, but all that stopped instantly. And, and my mom, well, she really didn't have, you know, purpose. She lost purpose, didn't have much to do because much of her life centered around him, as you can understand. And, and it, was, it was tough, but you see, a circumstance caused it. She, she didn't have anything to do. I do remember her and me, I was seven years old, as I said, but we would go into our uh, detached garage and her and I, just to pass the time, just to pass the time because so depressed and just depressing to sit in the house and we'd go in that garage and we'd, I remember her and me, we'd make bird houses. And uh, I tell you what, there's no bird in their right mind would have wanted to live in any of those <laughs> bird houses that we made. But, but that's what we did just to pass the time. Just, you know, it, it, it seemed to help the depression. It eased that off. You know, you get busy and you know as well as I do, if you can get your mind involved, busy doing something, it, it can help, help with depression. But, uh, but that's what we did to keep ourselves busy. But you see, a circumstance caused that, a very bad circumstance. But when bad circumstances happen to you, yes, it's good if you can find something to occupy your time and occupy your mind and all of that. But, but something even more important than that is, is and, and I didn't know about the Lord, you know, I, 
I knew about the Lord and I was born again at a very young age. I believed on the Lord and all of that, certainly. But I didn't know then what I know now about seeking God and whatnot. But I, but, but what I would tell anybody is, is if you have had a circumstance happen to you that's very negative, it's causing you to be depressed and, aff and affecting the way you, you're able to function, I would advise you, you know, yes, find ways to keep yourself occupied and all of that if you can. But the number one thing I would tell you to do is look to God, look to God. And, and, and I didn't know what I'm going to tell you now. I didn't know that back there then, but, you know, but, but, but I know it now. Look to God, look to God, because I tell you what, a bad circumstance happens and, and something really goes wrong and you'll, you know, just, you'll tend to want to look to every, everything and everybody but God. But I tell you what, you need to first and foremost, look to the Lord, look to God. I know the Apostle Paul, and you can see this in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. He was uh, nearing the end of his life and all of that, but still, he, uh, he, he, he had been in some very uh, uh, depressing situations throughout his ministry. And I just think about him as I read 2 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 10, he says, Demas has forsaken me. You know, now that was a close companion of his that traveled with him in the ministry. And Demas, uh, the Bible says he loved the present world. You can read on there and see that. And so he forsook Paul. I tell you what, when somebody forsakes you, that can, that's a bad circumstance. and That can cause depression. And then in verse 14, he says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. You know, and when people do things to harm you and hurt you. I tell you what, that can cause depression. And so no doubt that was affecting Paul. And uh, if you've lived any length of time at, at all on this earth, you've probably had some people do you much harm. Well, that can cause one to be depressed. You've probably had somebody forsake you here or there along the way in your life, and that can cause depression. And then in verse 16, he said, he said, at my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. You talk about a circumstance that can cause one to be down and depressed. Well, the apostle Paul had some really bad circumstances, but I like what he says in verse 17. He says, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. And I tell you what, that's what I want to encourage you with right here is if a bad circumstance has happened to you, look to the Lord because he will encourage you. He will strengthen you. And then also, if you look at verse 13, uh, the Apostle Paul writing to, to Timothy says this. He says, bring the cloak that I left. And he goes on, he says, and the books, especially the parchments. I believe he's making reference to the word of God here. And, and Paul is saying, hey, bring me the word of God. And so when we're in the midst of uh, uh, depression, I tell you what, we need to look to the word of God. We need to look to God and know that he'll stand with us and he'll strengthen us. But we, we really need to look into the word of God because I tell you what, it's there that we'll find relief from depression. Absolutely. The word of God has the power of God on it and the anointing of God on it as we read it, as we study it. I tell you what, it, it, there's something about it that, that sets captives free. And I tell you what, if you're bound by depression, you're a captive, but the word of God will set you free. So the Apostle Paul tells us what we need to do. And then also, too, I think about, you know, circumstances causing depression. I think about if you go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, uh, King David was in the midst of a, of a depressive situation as a result of circumstances. And I'll just read a couple of verses here. 1 Samuel 30 verse 1, it says, It came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and, and, Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any 
either great nor small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Now you talk about a circumstance that will cause depression. There you've got one, for sure. And notice here, the Bible says, David and the people that were with him, in verse 4, uh, David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Now, you talk about depression. There you have it, a result of a, a bad circumstance. Think of it. Wives and children taken captive, essentially kidnapped. You think about that. And they wept. David and his men wept until they had no more power to weep. They were all cried out had no more tears to cry. I mean, it was a bad situation. Verse 5, David's wives were taken captive. Then verse 6, notice it says, David was greatly distressed, or we could say depressed. Uh, and for the people spake of stoning him because, uh, now look, his, his men wanted to, wanted to stone him. Now you think about that. These were loyal, trusted men of his. I mean, they, I mean, they were all down in the dumps bad. It wasn't just a rainy day or a Monday here. It was bad circumstance. And they were depressed. They were all, you know, cried out. They had no more tears to cry. David was greatly di distressed. The people spoke of stoning him because the soul of the people were, were grieved, you know, and depressed. Every man for his sons and his daughters. Bad situation for David. But what did he do? What did he do? David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And so he encouraged himself. You know, we need to learn to do that, to encourage ourselves, because sometimes there's nobody around to encourage us. So, you know, we have to learn to encourage ourselves. But notice, uh, he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I believe he did what similar to what Paul did, he, he got into the Word of God. He, 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 he got in the Word of God, began, no doubt, to study it, meditate it, you know, and it brought great freedom to him. And he encouraged or he built, it, he built himself up in the Lord his God. How did we do that? We get into the Word of God. And, and, and that's what David did. I tell you what, we need to do the same thing. And I tell you what, it can bring us up out of the terrible pit of depression. Absolutely, it can. I know the main scripture I use to encourage myself is Hebrews 13, verse 5. And this might be helpful to you as well. Hebrews 13, verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have, for he said, the Lord said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And so whenever I'm dealing with depression and get low, uh, one thing that I do is, is I, I get real thankful for the things that I do have. Because, you know, it's so easy to start looking at everything that we don't have. Or we start looking at the circumstances and how bad it is and this, that, or the other. But what I do my best to do, I'm not 100% perfect at this. Just ask my wife, she'll tell you. But, I, but I'm better than I used to be. And, and I do do this. I, 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 and my wife will tell you. I, I, say, I say, honey, I say, you know what? Maybe this situation isn't the way we like it. But look, look at, look at, look at all the good things that, that, that we do have. Look at the things that we do have and the, the positive things that are going on. And I tell you what, it, it, it's really helpful to me and it has served me well over the years when there's, you know, I've been surrounded by bad things. I just start looking and try to find the good things. And, and I tell you what, it, it encourages me and it brings me up out of that depression when I start looking at things that I do have and, and positive things that are going on. And uh, it, 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 it helps me and it helps to outweigh those negative things. So that's just something that I do. I just get real thankful for the things that I that I do have instead of focusing on 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 the bad situation, the bad circumstance. You know, um, I I tell you what, something else I want to say. I just feel impressed to say this. Maybe it'll help you. But sometimes 
we get depressed over current circumstances that later on down the road, uh, we realize, you know, those circumstances at the time were depressing, but on down the road, we see that we really didn't need to be depressed at all over those things. Now, this what I'm saying is easier said than done, but, and, and really, we can't really know the, the fullness of this until time goes by. But I just want to encourage you with this because I, I wish I had had somebody to encourage me with some of these things I'm telling you years ago. But uh, I remember, I tell you what, uh, the, in my life, there were, there were two girls before I met my wife that, that I was interested in. So I've, I've only seen three girls in my life that, that I knew that I would have been interested in to marry. Two of them before I met my wife. None after, okay? <laughs> None after. Once I found her, that was it. My wife. But before I knew my wife, there were two girls. One back in junior high, high school, and then another one in, in the middle of that in the time I met my wife. But neither of those girls, and I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but, but neither of them were interested in me at all. I mean, at all. And I tell you what, uh, it was very depressing. And it, it brought me great, it brought me great depression. We're talking about circumstances, see? Terrible depression. It was, it was terrible. And I know, I know, uh, I can remember back with that, the, not the one in high school, but the other one. I mean, just dark days, just dark days. Cause I mean, she had no interest in me at all. And it was, it was just dark days, some dark stuff. But I tell you what, and they were never girlfriends of mine or nothing like that. You know, looking back on it, I was more in love with the idea of being in love than I was in love. I wasn't either in love with either one of them. But sometimes, you know, we get in love with an idea of something. But you know what? I, you know, I, I, in the process of time, I met my wife, Diane. And I, she, I mean, she's just the, the light of my life. And I mean... I mean, once I met her, that was the end. It was just, the, when I say the end, I mean, I mean, you know, it was the beginning. Let me say that right. It was wonderful. And she's made my life so wonderful. But, but when I said the end, I got to explain my way out of this. If I want to eat dinner tonight, it was, it, it, it was just the end of me looking for love. I found it in, in my wife, Diane. What a wonderful blessing she continues to be to me. She has brought me heaven on earth. I say that to say this. If I would have gotten either one of those other two girls, I know my life would have been absolute misery. Now, I'm not speaking anything negative against them. I'm just saying from what I've learned of them as time went on, I would have been absolutely miserable, probably would have wound up in a divorce uh, you know, if I'd have gotten either one of them. And it would have made my life absolute miserable miserable. And I tell you what, see, but I didn't know that at the time. Uh, and so back at the time, I was so down and so depressed because of circumstances and they didn't want to have anything to do with me. But now I look back all these years later and I'm dancing a jig on the streets, you know, that they didn't have anything to do with me. Maybe I must have been the Lord just blocking their vision to see how wonderful I was. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, but, but thank God for it because they weren't interested in me. Had I got either one of them, I'd have been miserable. And see, I was depressed back at that time, but all the time has come and gone. And now, well, it was a blessing that neither one of them had anything to do with me because I now got the love of my life. Maybe that'll be encouraging to you. And I think of another situation that I always wanted to teach math in the Rockwood School District. I, I, that was just something from the time I was, was in high school I wanted to teach math in the Rockwood School District here in the St. Louis County area. That was just something that I wanted to do. And I remember when I graduated from the University of Missouri St. Louis with my mathematics degree, I applied, you know, at Rockwood and they wouldn't give me the time of day for whatever reason. <laughs> there again, I don't know, but they wouldn't give me the time of day. And uh, so I got a job elsewhere and it, it all worked out fine. But, but they wouldn't give me, Rockwood wouldn't give me the time of day. Well, in the process of years that came and went, and we, my wife and I, we got married, went to Bible school in Oklahoma, came back to the St. Louis area, 
and I was I had a part time job teaching at the at the uh, at Merrimack Community College. I was teaching uh, algebra there, and uh, after about the third session, a lady walks up to me, and that was in the class, and she said to me, she said. Uh, uh, you wouldn't be interested in teaching in the Rockwood School District, would you? And my, my, you know, I got my full attention because at that time we hadn't started Summit uh, Church yet, and so I was, I was, you know, looking for a job to to teach full time until uh, you know got got the church going. And so I was working part time at Merrimack. But she walks up and she uh, uh, says, "You wouldn't be interested in teaching full time the Rockwood School District." And I, and I thought, well, well, so come on, keep talking, lady, keep talking. And she introduced herself to me. Now, this was, she was a student in my class at Merrimack. After about the third uh, session, she said, uh, she walked up and said that to me. And come to find out, she was the president of the Rockwood School Board. And she said, you know, she said, I've, I've never been able to understand math until I've sat here in your class. She said, you're doing a good job teaching. She said, would you like to teach? We could use teachers like you to Rockwood School District. Wow. Well, that, that blessed me. And so she said, just, uh, you know, fill out the, the paperwork and turn it into central office. We'll see what we can do. Very nice. Well, I turned that in and I tell you what the job, the, the, the interviews started coming. Interviews started coming. <laughs> If, you know, the president wants you to get interviews, president of school board, you know, you're going to get interviewed. Well, I got two interviews at really, you know, at, at good, good for good positions. And I, I went, I went to the interviews and uh, I was just sure, you know, the president wants me in, you know, the Rockwood school board, I'm going to get in, you know, one of these, I, these jobs, you know, I went for the interviews. And the first letter comes in the mail and I, you know, this, it's a done deal. I open it up, start reading and countenance spell, you know, it was, you know, we've, you know, you're not the best person for the job here at this time. We'll contact you later. Right? Huh. And so I thought, well, okay, I got this other, this other interview. So about a week later, here comes the letter. You know, I'm going to the mailbox every day, waiting for that letter and I open it up <laughs> and they did. And I did, I didn't get, I didn't, I didn't get either job. I couldn't understand it. I mean, and you talk about depression. You talk about my cir the circumstances being bad because I really needed financially. I needed this, <laughs> that job at that time. And uh, uh, I remember coming over to my mom's house. I remember sitting in the kitchen crying, just crying, just woo -hoo! you know, and then you really feeling good about, uh, not good, but feeling, you know, make you feel real good about yourself when the president writes a letter once you're in and you still can't get hired. I, that was some dark times for me there. And, uh, but you know what, come to find out if I had gotten either of those jobs, because uh, a short time later, we started Summit Church at the schools where I got those, had those interviews and we had to meet in those schools. And had I gotten either one of those jobs, long story short, I can't, don't have time to go into the details, but, but it would have hindered the starting of Summit Church because we started at Rockwood Summit High School. And just take it from me, I don't have the time to go through the, all the details, but it would have hindered, had I gotten either one of those jobs, it would have hindered the, the church. And so you see, I couldn't see it at the time. I was down, I was depressed because, you know, the president wants me in, I can't even get it hired. But you know what? Uh, you know, you know what? I tell you what, uh, uh, I look back at it now, had, had I got either one of those jobs, as depressed as I was that I didn't get either one, had I got either one of them, it would have hindered the starting of Summit Church. And maybe we wouldn't have, have ultimately been able to go on and, and build the building that we built and ministered all the people that we ministered to over the years. So what am I saying? Something can be depressing at the time, okay? But you look back later and you're thanking God, you know, you're thanking God that, that it, did, it didn't work out. You know, and, and, I, and I figured it this way, you know, uh, the president wanted me in there, but God didn't. <laughs> and if the president wants you in, but God does it, it don't matter what the president wants. If, I'm talking to president of the Rockwood School Board. It's what God wanted. He didn't want me in there and he wanted me doing this other thing. And, you know, we blessed a lot of people and continue to bless people. So, but what I'm saying is the circumstance was bad. It was depressing at the time, 
But looking back at it, you know, thank God it worked out the way it did. Well, maybe that helps somebody out there. But anyway, and then the last thing I want to talk about is perhaps you're suffering depression because of a, a spiritual attack of the devil. And the devil can do that. He, I tell you what, there, the Bible talks about a spirit of heaviness. And there really are demonic power powers and demonic spirits that can, can cause people fits of depression. Absolutely the truth. And you know, uh, but, I, but, but I've got good news for you. Listen to what, to some things I have to say to you about this. In Isaiah chapter 61, Isaiah chapter 61, because it talks about the spirit of heaviness, and it really tells us what we can do about it. But in Isaiah 61, verse 1, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now, actually, this was recorded by Isaiah, but this is the message that our Lord Jesus Christ preached in Nazareth. And, and so this is really Jesus talking to us here. And here's what he says. The Spirit of the Lord God's upon me. He preached this message from Isaiah in Nazareth. So this is the Lord talking to you and me. The Spirit of the Lord God's upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach. See, he was anointed by the Heavenly Father to preach good tidings to the meek. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound. I tell you what. Uh, depression, brokenheartedness, uh, uh, captive, being bound. I tell you what, he sent to preach under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to set, to set, notice what he said, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and, and so on and so forth, to comfort all that mourn, Think about that. That's what, that's what he came to do, the Lord Jesus, to preach under that anointing to a point uh, unto them that mourn in Zion. Zion is a type of the church. So he's talking to Christians here. We could make argument to a point unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, glory to God, or for weeping or mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. See, there is a spirit of heaviness, a demonic power, a demonic spirits that can cause depression. But, but he's given us the garment of praise in exchange for that spirit of heaviness uh, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So I think of that song, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of of heaviness. See, the Lord came forth and he came forth preaching under the anointing and the anointing of God. I tell you what, can, and the, 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 the preached word under the anointing of the Holy Spirit can drive a spirit of heaviness, a spirit of depression off of you. Absolutely the truth. And, uh, and I'm going to say a little more about the garment of praise here in just, in just a moment. But remember that the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I'll come right back to the garment of praise, but I want to emphasize this other point here about the importance of staying under the preached word, the anointed preached word of God. It's so important. You know, in Acts 10, 38, the Bible says how God the Father anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. See that word oppressed. See, the devil is an oppressor. He's a depressor. He likes to put press people down. And there is a very real uh, truth to uh, demonic spirits that can come upon people and oppress them and depress them. But what do we have here that can encourage us? Jesus the Lord went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed, or we could even say depressed, of the devil. Now, when we think of the ministry of Jesus, a lot of times we think about him laying hands on the sick, but you know that's only a third of his ministry. The Bible says he went about teaching, preaching, and healing. See, a lot of times people just put all the emphasis on Jesus laying hands on people and them being healed, but I tell you what, uh, two-thirds of his ministry was preaching and teaching, preaching 
and teaching the word of God. And as Jesus went about teaching and preaching, we read in Isaiah how the, the, the Holy Spirit anointed him to preach. And I tell you what, there's something about sitting under the preached word or, or, or the teaching of an anointed uh, a minister of the gospel, someone who's anointed that's teaching and preaching the word of God that can drive a spirit of depression off of you. Absolutely the truth. And that's what Jesus did. He went about teaching and preaching to people who were depressed and oppressed. And it drove demonic power away. He also healed the sick. He healed the leper. He cleansed the leper. He, he you know, brought sight to the blind and all of that. But I tell you what, you might be out there right now and you may not have a physical ailment, but you might be dealing with oppression, depression of the devil. It's important that, that you stay under the anointed preaching and teaching of the word of Almighty God, because I tell you what, it can, it can drive the power of the devil off. Praise God forevermore. And, uh, and so Jesus went about, yes, laying hands on the sick, but like I said, you might be out there and you might not be physically sick, but you might be oppressed or depressed in your mind and your soul. Tell you what, stay under the anointed teaching and preaching of the word, just like what I'm giving you here right now. I tell you what, it can, it can drive the power of the devil back. You know, I think about, turn to the book of Ezra very quickly in the time that I have left here uh, to, to teach with you. After the uh, Babylonian captivity and the people of God came back to Jerusalem and they began to rebuild, you know, the, the, the city and the wall and all of that. It's interesting in the book of Ezra in the Old Testament, chapter four, verses four and five. Then the people of the land tried. Now, these people are trying to the people of God are trying to rebuild the wall and rebuild Jerusalem and all that. But the people of, of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. Now, you think about that. Now, you think about that. These people are trying to do the work of God and build, rebuild Jerusalem and all of that. And, and you know what? It's easy enough to get discouraged, you know, without any outside help. But here, people were being hired to bring depression upon the people of God. You think about that. But in, in Ezra, the fifth chapter, notice what happens. It talks about in verse one, then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, uh, prophets prophesied to the Jews who were, who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. And so Zerubbabel and Yeshua uh, rose up and began to build uh, the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And notice this, it, notice this, it says, the prophets of God were with them, helping them. You see, if you're out there and you're dealing with depression and oppression and it's, it, it's, it's you know, the devil is oppressing you and depressing you and, and sending people across your path to, to depress you and oppress you and all of that, I tell you what, it's important to stay under the anointed preached word and taught word of the living God and, and prophets of God, ministers of God, teachers of the Lord, pastors, you know, as we preach the word of God under the anointing, I tell you, it's important to stay under the teaching of the word of God because it says right here, the prophets of God were with the people of God, helping them. I stand here as a minister of the gospel, preaching the word of God, sending the word of God to you to help you to encourage you, to drive off any demonic power that might be there oppressing and depressing you. Praise God. It's important that you, you stay under good preaching and teaching and listen to it on a regular basis. I know the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 says that God himself, you're talking about, well, talking about the Lord here, the Lord Jesus himself gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, Ephesians 4.12, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or the encouraging or the building up of the body of Christ. See, it's important that you sit under a good minister and let him, him he or she preach the word of God to you to edify you and build you up. I think about Acts, the 15th chapter in the 32nd verse, uh, says Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the people of God. So, you know, if you're being attacked by the devil and you're being oppressed or depressed, hey, I tell you what, stay under the teaching of the word of God and, and that anointed word 
as you sit and listen to it, it'll drive the it'll drive the devil back. It really, really will. And uh, then, then finally, as I said a moment ago, uh, it talks about the gar- God's given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I tell you what, one of the best ways to deal with a spirit of heaviness or a spirit of depression is just start praising God. Absolutely, praise God. Uh, and, and you, like I said, that there was a song years ago. It said, "Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift, lift up your voice to God." And I tell you what. Uh, well, let me just say this: when we're suffering from from the devil's attack of depression and that spirit of heaviness is upon us, I tell you what: that's that's a good time to just start praising God and worshiping God and lifting up your voice to God. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of His people, and you start praising God. Now it takes faith to do this, and it's easier said than done. But in the midst of a of an attack of the devil, you start praising. God, I tell you what, the power of God will manifest and the devil don't like that and it'll run him off and that oppression will cease. Glory to God, it really will. And I tell you, not only should we praise God and bless God in the midst of depression, but just like we need to stay under uh, uh, anointed teaching and preaching by uh, uh, ministers called of God, we also need to stay under good worship music. Absolutely. We're music that that is anointed of the spirit of God. Absolutely. I tell you what, you want to run the devil out just out of your life. Just get under anointed uh, 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 music. I mean, anointed music. I'm not necessarily talking about music that that that, that is popular in the land or, 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 you know, music that everybody else. I'm talking worship music. I'm talking I've heard a lot of quote unquote worship music that there's no more anointing on it than anything. I tell you what, when the anointing of God is on on music, I tell you what, the, the power of God manifests. And I tell you what, demonic power will just leave. I tell you what, you get so lifted up. And I tell you what, and, and that depression will leave you. I think about King Saul, you know, King Saul in the Old Testament. And uh, he, he had... Uh, uh, an evil spirit come on him and uh, and and he would get so depressed and oppressed and whatnot. And he sent for David. Excuse me. He sent for David and David came and played the harp. But it wasn't just the playing of the harp. It was David was anointed of the Holy Ghost and he would play that harp under the power of God. He'd play that harp under the power of God and the power of God came off uh, of that. I tell you what, I sensed it years ago when I was a little boy in vacation Bible school. I was standing there and, and the pastor's wife was playing the piano. And I tell you what, I was standing there with all the other kids and, and, and something was coming out of that piano. I started crying and weeping. I didn't know what it was. I learned later that it was the power of God on that music coming out of that piano as that little lady played. I tell you what, it, it, there's something about the anointed music of Almighty God that can do things in your life that nothing else can. And, and, and I remember I wept under there as a as a as an eight nine year old boy. You know, all other kids looking at me, wondering what's wrong. There's nothing wrong. It was the power of God. That's what happens to me sometimes when the power of God manifests. I start weeping and crying, but it was coming off that music. But old backslid King Saul, he got so down and depressed and uh, by that evil spirit. But David came and he played that harp under the power of almighty God. And that music came off that harp anointed of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says it drove that evil spirit away from Saul and it refreshed him. I tell you what, if it'll do that for Saul, it'll do it for you. It'll do it for me. And I've had the music, anointed music, do it for me many times. Lift me up out of a depression as, as the depressive spirits would leave me. I tell you what, praise God. Well, I trust this has helped you today. Uh, uh, if you've been out there dealing with depression, I want to leave you with two verses along the lines of praising God. Psalm 43, verse five, uh, the psalmist asked the question. He says, he's talking to his soul. He's talking to himself. Have you ever talked to yourself? He said, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul. And why are you disquieted within me? Well, it, it appears to be he's cast down 
depressed and so forth and disquieted. But then he says, talking to himself, encouraging himself, he says, hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. So I tell you what, if you're out there and you're dealing with oppression or depression, you know, and the devil's attacking you, uh, you know, stay under that, that anointed preaching of the word of God, stay under anointed worship music and, 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 you know, just hope in God and praise God. I like Psalm 118, verse 24, Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day. I like this verse. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So there's something about praising God that'll just drive, drive demonic, depressive spirit. Uh, activity away from us. But I tell you what, let me leave you with this verse. Let's just, and this, it just takes faith no matter what your, no matter what the situation you are in. This is a good verse to, to, to meditate on and do, and ought to do this every day. This is the day the Lord has made. I will, it's a decision you got to make. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So make that decision every day. Rejoice and be glad in it. Well, I trust this helped you. God bless you. Hey, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, well, you need to receive him right now. The Bible says there's a heaven to gain. There's a hell to shun. The only way to miss hell and make heaven is to repent of your sins and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. That means miss hell and make heaven. So call on the name of the Lord. You'll miss hell. You'll make heaven one day and God will make your life worth living in the meantime. Well, God bless you and be encouraged and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.